welcome back to Sunday School. It's good to be back with you for another Sunday School. We have a powerful story today. It's the story of Anne Frank. We want to thank Karen and Geary for their wonderful music this week. We want to, to thank uh, Olive for doing communion last week and uh, for Clara for being our acolyte last week. We both did great jobs. We want to thank uh, Ben for being our acolyte this week. Way to go, Ben. Well, if there are ways that we can be of support to you or your families, let us know. And with that, let's head on in to lighting the candle this morning. For today's lesson, we recommend that your parents join you, as this is a story that may, you may want to talk about afterwards with them, or if you need to talk with Graham or Nancy or I, know that we are available as well. In the book of Zephaniah, the Jewish people were facing a scary and challenging time, and thus, we learn of the notion of Shoah. Shoah was that of complete and total destruction, devastation and suffering beyond words. It's from this concept that the word Holocaust is created. Today's story is a hard story. It's a sad story, but it's also a powerful and important story. It's the story of Anne Frank, a teenage German-Jewish girl who, with her family, when the Nazis came to power, went into hiding. Eight of them went into hiding together. There, Anne began to keep a daily diary. In 1944, the family was betrayed, and they were discovered and taken to concentration camps. After the family's capture, Meep, one of the employees of Anne's father, found Anne's diary and would protect it till after the war. Of the eight that were captured and taken to the concentration camps, only Anne's father, Otto, survived. That diary would be published, and when you get to middle school, you will probably read it. Anne and more than six million other Jews were killed in the Holocaust. Now, why is it important that we hear this story? It's important that we hear these stories because, as Anne wrote, what is done cannot be undone, but it, we can prevent, prevent it happening again. It's important to hear these stories so that we would work every day to ensure that the events of the Holocaust never happen again. January 27th is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. January 27th was the day that the first of the concentration camps was liberated. In spite of great destruction and suffering which Anne faced, she found love and hope. And she wrote, that in spite of everything, I still believe that people are good at heart. When the British liberated Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, the camp where Anne and her sister Margaret go had been and died, the surviving Jewish prisoners sang Israel's national anthem at their liberation, Hatikva, which literally translates the hope. And the words in English go something like this. In the Jewish heart, a Jewish spirit still sings, and the eyes look east toward Zion. Our hope is not lost. Our hope is 2,000 years old to be a free nation in our land, the land of Zion and Jerusalem. Anne wrote, No one need wait a single moment 
before starting to improve the world. Look at how a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. May we remember these stories. May we be those candles that defy and define the darkness, that work for justice and love in the world. Let's head on in to Sunday School. Here's this week's quiz. Jackie Robinson played for what Major League Baseball team? Was it A, the New York Yankees, B, the Brooklyn Dodgers, or C, the New York Giants? Announce your answer. The correct answer is B, the Brooklyn Dodgers. At UCLA, Jackie Robinson competed in A, football, B, baseball, C, basketball, D, track, E, all of the above. Your answer? The correct answer is E, all of the above. Jackie Robinson Day is celebrated by all Major League Baseball teams each year on what day? Is it A, April 15th, B, June 17th, or C, August 28th? Your answer? The correct answer is A, April 15th. Thanks for taking the quiz. I am Anne Frank. As a girl, I loved the same things many kids love. Playing hide and seek and tag, ice skating, and going to the movies. I also really loved writing stories. I grew up in a Jewish family and believed in God and helping to make the world a better place. But in Germany, where I was born, there were people known as Nazis who didn't like the Jews or other groups who were different from them. The Nazis were led by the terrible Adolf Hitler, who blamed the Jews for all of Germany's problems, even though we hadn't done anything wrong. To protect us from the Nazis, my family moved to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We became refugees and tried to travel to the United States, but we couldn't. Life in the city of Amsterdam was good for years until May 10, 1940, when the Germans invaded the Netherlands. The Nazis were trying to take over the world. The Germans passed new laws. Jews were not allowed in public parks, beaches, pools, or in libraries. We couldn't go to the movies or ride our own bikes or drive our own cars or buy food at certain restaurants. And then the Germans said we had to leave our school. Every day, it seemed to get worse. In 1942, the Nazis made us wear Jewish stars. If we got caught outside without our star, we'd get in trouble. This sounds scary, but this isn't a story about fear. It's a story about hope. Even when bad things happen, there are good things all around. On my birthday, on June 12th, my parents put out my presents, and there was one particular gift uh, that I was so excited to receive, a diary. It had its own little lock. I started writing immediately. Kitty was the name I gave to my diary. I wanted the diary to be my friend. A few weeks later, we got the terrible news that my sister Margot had received a call-up notice. We knew what that meant. The Nazis would send her to a concentration camp, a prison where Jews were locked up and made to work all day and night. There was almost nothing to eat and or drink, and it was nearly impossible to escape. So, the best choice was to go into hiding so the Nazis couldn't find us. We packed only the most important things. For me, that was my diary. Our hiding spot was a small area at the back of my father's office, the secret annex. Another Jewish family, the Van Pels, was hiding with us. It wasn't an easy place to live. During weekdays, we had to whisper. All the windows were covered. 
We didn't wear our shoes on the wood floors to keep from making noise. There was one big bright spot though, the non-Jewish helpers who risked their own lives to protect us. The Nazis threatened to punish anyone who helped the Jewish people, but these amazing people decided it was more important to do the right thing and help us. We hid in the secret annex for two years and one month. I went to school here. I wanted to be a famous writer to make an impact on people's lives. With eight of us crammed together, our world was very small. But if you look for what's good, you'll find it. The attic had one window that wasn't covered where I could see the blue sky and this one chestnut tree. I grew up here. I saw the world from here. And eventually, the world saw me. In my life, there were many reasons to be sad and lonely and scared. But there were also many reasons to love and laugh and hope. You can always find light in the darkest places. That's what hope is. It's a fire within you. You decide when to light it. And when it burns bright, nothing can put it out. Hitler and the Nazis were defeated at the end of World War II. Six million Jews, including Anne Frank, were killed in what is now known as the Holocaust. By remembering and telling Anne's story, we make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Whatever our religion, wherever we're from, we have a responsibility to one another. Anne's diary was found by Meep Geese, who never read it. Eventually, she gave it to Anne's father. Today, Anne Frank's diary is one of the most read, most inspiring books in the world. More than one million people visit the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam each year. In 2010, Anne's chestnut tree was blown down in a storm. But today, there are locations all over the world where its saplings were planted and new chestnut trees bloom. In the Jewish faith, there's a saying, if a person saves one life, it's as if they've saved an entire world. Throughout your life, you'll find people who need help. Be a helper. Be the one who does the right thing. When you see something that's unfair, do not be silent. Sometimes it will be hard. When it is, look up. See the beauty of the world and see the beauty in people. Now you know my story and I'm a part of yours. Never forget, the world depends on it. I am Anne Frank. And I believe that people are truly good at heart. We now come to communion. We remember that on a night, a hard night for Jesus and his disciples,
a night that was scary, a night before great suffering and struggle, Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he gave thanks for it and he, he broke it and Jesus gave it to them and Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this bread, remember me. And in the same way, after the dinner, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks for it. And he said, this, is, this cup is, is my blood poured out for you. As often as you drink this cup, remember me. God's love is with us always. It's with us when things are wonderful and exciting and joyful. And it's with us when things are hard and scary. Daring us to be people of justice and compassion in this world. Amen. Well, friends, today's story is about Anne Frank an amazing young girl who chose to keep her dreams alive in the darkest hours when her very life was in peril. Anne Frank is an inspiration for us as we live through this pandemic. We have some restrictions right now in order to stay safe, but nothing like what Anne Frank faced. I think we can imagine what it must have been like for her to be trapped indoors in an attic for two years having to be quiet and wondering what was happening in the outside world. But dreams don't die. Her dream of being a writer came true. After her death, her diary was published and she is known around the world for her writing. You may want to read her diary or start writing a diary of your own. So keep your dreams alive, whatever they are. Have a good week.